Welcome back to Aero Talks. Today we're doing a deep dive into uh, a really interesting piece of kit, the Mars Interceptor Drone Hunter. Yeah, it definitely feels like a system born directly from, you know, the lessons we're seeing play out right now in Eastern Europe. Exactly. And our main source here is Insights on Stephen Scott. He's the managing director over at Mars Defense Labs. Right. And Scott's background is pretty key here. He spent, what, 16 years at MBDA? Yeah, a long time. Head of future battlefield capability at one point. So he's seen it all, basically, from infantry weapons right up to missile design. That gives him uh, a really broad perspective for this counter drone work. It's quite a pivot for Mars, though, isn't it? I mean, they started out in the super yacht world. They did, yeah. But the core technology, their AI platform, Nedar Core, that was actually quite well suited. Ah, right, because it was already good at tracking small, fast things near the water surface, like tenders or potential threats to yachts. Precisely. So when Scott joined in 2020, he really leveraged that NADAR system to push into the counter UAS space. It makes sense. Which brings us to the interceptor itself. Scott calls it a cost-effective hard kill solution against drones, effective out to about five kilometers. Yeah, that's the interceptor MR model. And the engineering concept is, well, quite novel. He described it as basically an electric missile without a rocket motor. An electric missile. Okay, how does that work then? So instead of propellant, it uses four propellers. Very powerful ones. Driven by batteries. Exactly. Extremely high power density batteries. This thing moves fast about 80 meters per second. That's uh, nearly 300 kilometers per hour. Pretty quick for a propeller system. It is. And a huge advantage is safety. No explosives, no rocket fuel. It's inherently safer to operate, especially near infrastructure or populated areas. So the kill mechanism is purely kinetic, just hitting the target. Pure kinetic energy. The interceptor itself weighs about 8 kilograms, and at that speed, it builds up significant energy. But is that enough for, say, larger drones? Or is it really optimized for things like the Shahid drones we see so often, you know, the ones often made of composites or plastics? It's definitely engineered with that class of drone in mind. They use sophisticated guidance for a head-on collision, and the system actually uses the target's own kinetic energy against it upon impact. Clever. Mm. And durable enough for impact. Apparently so. The nose cone and the leading edges are made from titanium specifically to handle that impact force. Okay, so it's safe, it's kinetic. What about control and cost? It's autonomous, right? Housed in a launcher. Fully autonomous, yes. It sits in a vertical smart launcher, all linked into that NEDAR sensor network we mentioned. But fully autonomous can make people nervous. Is there an operator involved? Oh, absolutely. It's supervised autonomy. An operator watches the engagement through the NEDAR command interface. They can abort the mission anytime. Uh, and unlike a missile, if you abort... <laughs> it just returns home, flies back to base. That's a massive difference in terms of, well safety and cost if there's a mistake or the situation changes. And the cost is the real kicker here, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Compared to, say, uh, a VSA DRAD missile. Night and day. A traditional missile intercept can cost millions. Scott's aiming for the interceptor to be under $50,000 per unit. Under 50000 Ideally, yeah. Less than the cost of the drone it's shooting down. That completely changes the economic calculation of air defense. It tackles that attrition problem. Which must be why NATO countries are looking at it. Definitely. There's a lot of interest, particularly from nations worried about facing similar threats to those seen in Eastern Europe or the Middle East. They see it as a point defense system. For military sites and uh, critical infrastructure, too, like power plants. Exactly. Power stations, oil refineries, government buildings. It's designed as dual use. And they developed this pretty fast. Yeah. Scott mentioned Mars being self-funded. Yeah, he said that allows them that design, build, test, fail approach. It they can not. iterate quickly and keep all the IP. Missions are meant to be quick, too, completed within five minutes. That speed seems crucial. Now, we do see lots of, you know, homemade FPV interceptors being used in conflict zones these days. How does this compare? Well, Scott acknowledges that proliferation but highlights Mars's advantage. Certification and qualification. Governments need reliability, quality control, supply chains, proper integration. Right. It's the difference between a DIY solution and an industrial qualified military product. Precisely. You need that trust and reliability for national defense. So the big picture here really seems to be this rapid shift towards these kinetic, lower cost drone hunters. It feels like it's forcing a whole rethink of what air defense, maybe even air superiority, means now. It certainly points towards a major evolution in how nations need to think about defending their airspace, especially against these low-cost, numerous threats. Thank you for listening. We will see you in the next episode.